pod landing. Where am I? In 1978, Kenner was the king of toy sales thanks to their team up with Lucasfilm to produce toys based on Star Wars, a toy line that most toy companies turned down. This started up a strong friendship between the two companies, and in 1980 with the release of Empire Strikes Back and a line of new figures based on that sequel, it was clear that the toy sales in the films wasn't a fluke. Kenner hit a gold mine with Star Wars figures, but for Empire Strikes Back, that gold mine had turned into a booming gold town. When Kenner learned that Lucasfilm was teaming up with the man behind Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Steven Spielberg, for a new film starring one of Star Wars' main stars, Harrison Ford, they knew they wanted to be a part of it. The Spielberg Lucasfilm movie was Raiders of the Lost Ark and would be set for release of the summer of 1981. Kenner knew that with those names behind the film, it would be a big hit, which would then mean more adventures for Indiana Jones. So Kenner made a deal with Lucasfilm. Not only would they get the rights for toys based on Raiders of the Lost Ark, but all future films under the Indiana Jones series. They didn't want to get risk of getting outbidded for the toy rights for any of the sequels. The movie was released in 1981 and became the biggest film of the year and kids, and more importantly, young boys, had fallen in love with Indiana Jones and wanted it to play out his adventure. However, Kenner wasn't 100% sold and they didn't jump right in to Indiana Jones too fast as they wanted to make sure the movie was not only a hit, but kids loved it. So it wasn't until early 1982 that stores were getting their fill of Indiana Jones toys called The Adventures of Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. With their Star Wars golden egg still driving sales, Kenner waited for Indiana Jones hype to take off, giving them even more riches. However, that never really came. Not as big as they had hoped. The first series of figures underperformed, but Kenner went ahead with a series two of figures, and the sales were even lower, and most stores didn't even order the newer figures. After all, this was 1983. A new Star Wars film and figures were hitting stores. He-Man action figures from Mattel was starting to take off, and a year before that, kids had fallen in love with a new alien called E.T. Raiders was already two years old, and that's a long time in the mind of kids, more so in the days before VHS tapes. Kids at this time had moved on, but according to Kenner, there was more to it than just that. According to Kenner's president, a lot of the blame would be put on the film itself, saying it was aimed for an older audience. While Star Wars was aimed for almost any boy over the age of 4 or 5, Raiders seemed to appeal to an older teenage boy who had already stopped buying action figures. Kenner's president believed that any toy line that couldn't appeal to kids under the age of 9 just wouldn't be successful, and that in turn was Indiana Jones. Although Kenner canceled the line in 1983, they knew another adventure of Indiana Jones was planned for summer of 1984, and they still held the rights for those toys. Maybe this time the movie would be aimed for a more younger toy buyer? Kenner hoped so, but they didn't want to jump right in. This time they asked to read the script before agreeing to make any figures based on the upcoming sequel, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. After doing so, they found the film to be darker and more mature than even the last film. Kenner's president would say that the film did have two things that young boys need if they're gonna sell toys to them, adventure and excitement. But they felt that this film wasn't wholesome or in good taste, therefore it didn't fit with the Kenner brand. So after reading the script, Kenner made their decision to turn down toys based on the sequel. Turning toys down based on a film wasn't anything really new for Kenner, as they had just turned down the rights to another 1984 summer movie, this one being Gremlins, as they felt it was too frightening for kids, so Kenner passed on toys based on that film. With Kenner out of the pictures for Temple of Doom, Lucasfilm struck a deal with smaller toy company LGN for the action figure line. Like Kenner's Raiders of the Lost Ark line, the Temple of Doom line would also tank in sales, even more so than the Kenner line did. LGN would only release three figures and quickly cancel the line before the other two figures in the line was even released, also canceling plans for a playset. Overall, it seems Kenner was in the right frame of mind. They knew Indiana Jones just wasn't the type of movie aimed for an action figure buying age group. Hasbro would even learn in 2008 with their release of Indiana Jones action figures when they failed to sell at stores. It's been said that when it comes to Indiana Jones, kids wanted to play as Indiana Jones rather than play with Indiana Jones. It was a great movie, and kids did like it. But there was no aliens, no cool spaceships. It was more about putting on an old hat and running around in the woods with your friends, or playing with plastic figures on the floor of your bedroom. Well, that's a look at why we didn't get any Kenner Temple of Doom action figures. I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up and like my content. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping though.
Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.